Welcome to Morning Devotion with Ken Gurley. Devotions designed to inspire you on your daily walk with God. Here's your host, Ken Gurley. Hey, good morning, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Wednesday, August the 5th. This is the fourth day of 21 days of prayer, and we're hoping that you're finding this meaningful, but this is a special morning devotion. Because today, one year ago today, we began the call to prayer. And that's why we started today with that shofar. May close it out with the same, I don't know. One year of calling people to prayer. What a great and noble calling and how rewarding and fulfilling this has been. And thank you for being a part of this. We're live on Facebook, live also on YouTube, podcasts on Apple, Google, Spotify, trying to get a word out that if we can unify in prayer, we shall see nothing short of a great awakening in America and in our world across the seven seas and the seven continents. May we see the spirit of the Lord in great liberty. We are believing for a great awakening. So you know the drill. Thank you for being a part of this. Like the page, follow the page, share the page. Thank you, Amy. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Beverly. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank each of you for being a part of this. We started with the shofar today. It was a common sound in Israel. It was given significance because of its unique voice, so human, so resonating, like the voice of God. We are looking to God in this 21 days. Oh, praise God. It, what, how, whatever good adjective you can think of, then Jesus is the comparative and the superlative of that word. He's higher and highest, sweeter and sweetest. He gets richer as the days go by. Can I get a witness to that? Ezekiel said God's voice was like that of many waters. When John was in the spirit on the Lord's day, he said, I heard a voice behind me like a trumpet, like a shofar. It awakened me. It turned me around. I did a 180. God's people in ancient times were acquainted with that shofar. It's called framed each and every day from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. By night, a priest was assigned to watch four fires in the temple. The first three fires were the brazen altar, golden candlestick, golden altar of incense. You know that. But the fourth fire was called the first spark of a new day because three things simultaneously would happen at that moment. The first spark, the dawn, the awakening, oh, praise God, the morning sacrifice, and the sounding of the shofar. And that would be repeated again at the evening time. And so here we are. Here we are at morning devotion, offering up the morning sacrifice. And we started with the sound of the shofar. The shofar would call people to ancient holy convocations and solemn assemblies and feast, the blessings of the priests. And of course, oh yeah, every 50 years, the jubilee, or as Jesus said, the acceptable year of the Lord. And so it is, the shofar, the ram's horn, the silver trumpets used later in the temple. God would call his people into a season of prayer. And I feel so strongly that this is our season and this is our time. This is the moment that we should be called into prayer and in defining everything that God has for us. How desperately, how desperately we need him in this very day that we're living in. Oh God, we need you. Somebody just tell the Lord that right now, could you? Oh Lord, we need you very, very much. This is the call to prayer. This is day four, the call to prayer. When Solomon was crowned king, how did people know it? They knew it by the blowing of the shofar. When the horns began to blare, 
They pronounced him king. When we lift up our voices in prayer, we're saying Jesus is king and Lord of all. What invited the presence of the Lord into that, into Solomon's temple like that thick fog in San Francisco? So much preparation, so much sacrifice, everything done in God's order, yes. But just before the spirit of the, uh, of the glory of God filled the house, we read that the priest blew the trumpets. Oh, my. And is it a little wonder that wherever the ark went, the priest would herald its coming by the blowing of the shofar, that God's presence <laughs> comes on the heel of the call to prayer. Do you get do you get what I'm saying right now? On the other side of the shofar, on the other side of the call to prayer, there is a move of God. When Gideon's 300 sounded their trumpet, the enemy grew confused and defeated. When you and I come together to pray, it will confound the enemy. When you and I gather during a pandemic season and say our God is bigger, our God God is higher. Our God is better. On the other side of our call to prayer, there's victory and there's freedom from oppression and there's freedom from sickness and pain and misery and whatever you and I are going through. The Bible says that when the Spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon, he blew the trumpet. When God's Spirit begins to move, this is the hope of all of mankind that a call will go out. And who can forget that prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ in the Olivet Discourse? Uh, the Bible says he will send his angels with the great sound of the trumpet and they will gather together the elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. This story is not going to end with a bassoon or an oboe or a piccolo or a flute. Uh, there's going to be the sound of a trumpet, of a shofar. That's, it's going to happen when Gabriel Gabriel raises that trumpet to his lips and the blast is going to reverberate around the world. Listen to me. If you can hear the daily call to prayer, you're going to be ready on that great day. I feel the presence of the Lord. And I know, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, we are moving into a season of an awakening. We are moving into a season because there is a call to prayer going out. And Kimmy and Elaine and Teresa and Ben and Faye, uh, I know that you are obeying that call. When two or three of us begin to get together, something happens. Uh, David, only after you hear the sound of marching in the top of the mulberry trees do you move. Joshua, only lead Israel into battle after you've had a vision of the captain of the Lord's angel armies. As in heaven, so in earth. Uh, when God goes looking for the call to prayer, and he said, somebody lift a trumpet and call to prayer. It means that something is happening in the heavenly realm and that there are going to be people on this earth that will respond to the call of prayer. There is an anointing and there is freedom that is coming into our world that we have not seen in a long time. We need to heed that call to prayer. There are trumpets sounding right now if we could hear them. Heaven is sounding trumpets uh, saying awaken, awaken, awaken. And you and I need to become trumpets, shofars for God, like Wesley and Whitefield and others uh, who held a prayer meeting at 3 a.m. in one prayer meeting. John Wesley said the power of God came mightily upon us insomuch that many cried for exceeding joy. Many fell to ground. It was Wesley and Whitefield that would crisscross uh, the globe because of that one encounter with God, human trumpets, uh, like a like John, uh, like a young Welshman named uh, Evan Roberts. Uh, he he found himself repeatedly awakened early, early in the morning, and by November of that year, that he was being awakening, uh, an awakening swept through Wales, known as the Welsh Revival. Uh, we need. An awakening. Nothing short will do. I, I can't go through the motions. We can't just keep going through the same old, same old. We are in a world the likes of which we have never seen, has not been seen for at least a century. 
And there have got to be people that rise up. Uh, where, where are the Agnes Osmonds and the Charles Parham's and the Lucy Pharaohs who are going to gather in all night prayer meetings? Where are the Frank Bartlemans who devoted himself six months to prayer before the first revival broke out at Azusa Street? Uh, where are the people that called down a century of Pentecostal fire? Where are those people today? Uh, I believe I'm talking to some of them right now that you've been designed by God to issue a call to prayer in your own sphere of influence. Uh, it will resonate uh, like that shofar. Uh, this is a day. This is a day. We were born uh, for this age. Uh, this is a day. There is going to be light in the evening time, midnight at high noon. People are groping. Uh, I thank God for the Davids amongst us that know how to pick up a harp play skillfully. I thank God for people that know how to soothe the sheep and calm everybody down. Oh my, do people need to be calmed down? Yeah, I thank God for that. But I would remind you that I'm not just here to comfort the afflicted. I'm here to afflict the comfortable. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm here to lift a shofar, not a harp. Uh, I, I, I thank God for the Miriams who can pick up their tambourines and draw everyone into dance and worship. I, I thank God for that. We need that. You need to, I mean, what is that old song? Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. Yeah, you need to get up and dance a little bit today. But I would remind you of that prophecy of Azusa Street that in the last days, my people will be drawn to praise a God to whom they no longer pray. You stop and think about that. They will praise a God to whom they no longer praise. Uh, that was the prophecy given at the modern rebirth of our movement, saying one day there's going to be saints of God that will sing about a God that they don't pray to. They'll dance before a God they no longer pray to. They'll shout before a God they no longer pray to. That's the sound of the shofar that's got to reverberate deep within us. There is a resonating voice calling us to pray again, to stir those who are at ease in Zion. If you've not been stirred yet this year, I don't know what will wake you up to warn those that are living in a shadow of a volcano, to be like Abraham in Genesis 22 and say, here am I, to be like Isaac in the same chapter to say, here am I, to be like Jacob in Genesis 31 and say, here am I, to be like Joseph in Genesis 37 saying, here am I, four generations, I'm calling for four generations of apostolics to awaken and say, here am I. To be like Moses in Exodus 3 in a fiery bush and say, here am I. To be like Isaiah at the throne of God in Isaiah 6, here am I. And in that darkened house of God, on one of the darkest hours of Israel's national history, when a little trembling boy recites the words that a carnal prophet had put in his mouth. And Samuel said, here am I. Can you hear that there is a call to prayer going out? It's a call of prayer. It's the last sound and cry of God to a world headed into oblivion. My late pastor used to love telling this story. It took me absolutely forever to find this story, but I finally did. As the North Vietnamese army surrounded Saigon, American civilian and military ships crowded close to the South Vietnam's coastline. There was only one chance, one day that you could escape, one window of opportunity, but nobody knew the day. Prior to the evacuation, the American embassy had distributed a 15-page booklet called SAFE, Standard Instruction and Advice to Civilians in Emergency. And that booklet included a map of Saigon showing helicopter landing zones to pick up any person fleeing for their lives. The booklet said, you've got to listen. You've got to listen. To, you've got to tune in to 8.20 a.m. on the radio dial. And a code expression is going to be read. The temperature in Saigon 
is 105 degrees and rising. And as soon as you hear that sentence and hear the song, Bing Crosby's White Christmas following it. Whew. Journalists unfamiliar with the song started playing the song just so they would recognize that song. They played the sound that they would recognize it. And so on the morning of April 29, 1975, the code went out. It's 105 degrees in Saigon, temperatures rising. Bing Crosby's White Christmas was played. It was time to leave. That meant the helicopters were on the way. Those who heard the code, the song, and obeyed. They raced to the pickup zones. Fights began to erupt. People struggled to be in the number picked up by the helicopters. Those arcs of safety, like heavenly visitations, they came. Uh, they came for thousands who heard the call. You listen to me, morning devotion. Thank you for being here. Trenton and Kimmy and Joyce and Neva, thank you for being here. But oh, would you hear what I'm about to say? There is a call going out. It's going out again and again for those who have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. God is calling us into a season of prayer to bring the dawn, to unlock an awakening. We're doing this each morning during 21 days. Tonight at our church, we're having a prayer at 7 o'clock. What more can we do, folks? What can we do? We can pray. We are in the 11th hour, and we've got to bind together in these waning moments of the sunset of time. The night is coming when no man can work, and what we do, we've got to do quickly. We have to answer that call. It's happened before in our nation's history on July 12, 1775, in a letter to his wife explaining the Continental Congress's decision to declare a season of fasting and prayer. It was none other than John Adams who wrote, we have appointed a fast over this nation. Millions will be upon their knees at once before the great creator, imploring his forgiveness and his blessing and that he would smile on us. Oh, praise God. Oh, praise God. I'm about to close this, but before I do, just a few moments. Can you hear the call to prayer? Is God stirring your heart to pray? Can you, can you sense the nearness of an awakening? Who knows? It may have already broken out in certain areas, but the day has not yet dawned in your area. It's happening now. Leave those prayer requests, bind together and say, I am with you in this. Uh, I'm going to let you hear that call to prayer one more time before I close this out. Thank you for being a part of this devotion and please share with someone else. God bless you. Bye.